Well, every Sunday, we celebrate communion because we want to remember Christ's sacrifice for us. There is no greater gift that has ever been given than the gift of salvation. And we need to be reminded often of who we once were before Christ and how God saved us and what we were saved from. So our passage this morning is out of Romans, Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So we're going to look at this passage, and there are two absolutes in this passage. Please open your Bibles to Romans 6.23. If you do not have a Bible, there are some men up front who are very excited to provide one for you. And if you don't own a Bible, you may take this one home with you as a gift from Grace Bible Church. So verse 23 in Romans chapter 6 is the final verse in that chapter. The first 14 verses in this chapter, in the first 14 verses, Paul describes that as believers we have been crucified with Christ and are freed from sin. Verse 6 says, Knowing this, that our old self was crucified with him in order that our body of sin might be done away with, so that we would no longer be slaves to sin, for he has died. He who has died is freed from sin. And then the second half of chapter 6, Paul exp explains two different positions to the same thing. As an unbeliever, we were slaves to sin, but now we have become slaves to righteousness. We have a new master. We have died to sin to walk in newness of life. Salvation doesn't free us to sin. It frees us from sin to do what is right. You have a new heart with a new motivation. And if you don't have that, you don't have Jesus. Salvation takes unholy men and makes them holy. It is a call from sin to holiness. So the first absolute in verse 23 is that the wages of sin is death. This is an absolute law put into place by God. There is no possibility of anyone being an exception to this law. Outside of salvation, nobody gets around this absolute Without the power of the Holy Spirit over sin, sin adds to sin and ends in death because the wages of sin is death. Now what does this mean? The word wages is just what it says. We all know what wages are. It is something earned. Wages are just a compensation for what we have done. However, at this point, it's also helpful to understand uh, what is the nature of sin. John MacArthur says, sin is the most devastating, the most debilitating, the most degenerating power that ever entered the human stream. It kills everyone and ultimately, except by the intervening grace of God, would send everyone to eternal hell. Sin dominates the hearts and minds of lost men and women separates them from God, and therefore is their greatest enemy and problem. It is the common denominator in every crime, immorality, pain, and sorrow. And there is no natural cure. The natural individual does not even want his or her sin to be cured. So the wages of sin is death. The, the law says, because of sin, you earn death. When God brings eternal death on a life, meaning hell forever, it's because that person earned it. Is it just? Is it fair? Yes. 
It's God's universal law. It cannot be changed, altered, or stopped. God is just in his, just in his dealings and is obligated to pay. If he did not pay it, he would be defrauding the one who earned it. And those who hope to be pardoned or hope for deliverance without Christ are hoping that God would be unjust. God is not unjust. There's another absolute in verse 23. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So what is the difference in this absolute from the wages of sin is death? Eternal life is not a wage. It's a free gift. You can earn it, or you, you can earn it, or can you earn it by your works? Can you earn it through religion? No. This is not confusing. It is a gift. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, by, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. Next question. How do we receive this free gift? What does it say at the end of verse 23? The free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Acts 4.12 says, And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which we must be saved. So what, what must we do? Paul says in Romans 10, If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart, a person believes, resulting in righteousness. And with the mouth, he confesses, resulting in salvation. It is by God's grace that we are pardoned from our sin. It is God's sovereign grace that draws us, convicts us of our sin, grants us repentance and faith, and opens our eyes to see what Christ has done for us. One author describes our conversion in this way. The conversion of a single sinner is a miracle of staggering proportions. To be rescued from the domain of darkness and transferred to the kingdom of his beloved son, Colossians 1.13, required an invasion of this world by God so profound that no other work of God even touches it. God had to become one of us. Jesus Christ had to take our sin upon himself. He had to be rejected by the Father. He had to die in agony and spiritual humiliation under the curse of sin. And had, he had to conquer death through the resurrection so that we could be given life pondering the magnitude of the miracle that transforms sinners from old life to new spiritual reality causes deeply grateful worship. So if you're here today and you have not received the gift of salvation, please allow the elements to pass you by. Communion is for believers to remember what Christ has done for them and to rejoice in our Savior. We want you to know that we are very glad that you are here, and we also pray that you will repent of your sins and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Please don't hesitate to ask anyone who is here today or any of the elders concerning the free gift of God in Christ Jesus and in what it means to be saved by grace. Men, please come in service. Believers, examine yourselves and rejoice in your Savior. You may take communion on your own when you're ready, and I'll be back in a few minutes to close this portion of our service in prayer.